also will be looking at Joel chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. Bless your name. Joel chapter 1, 1 through 7. And we're going to go to chapter 3, 16 through 18. Joel chapter 1, verse 1 reads, The word of the Lord that came to Joel the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath eaten, uh, left, hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the cake worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. Awake ye drunkards, and weep, and howl, all ye drunkards of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation has come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. In chapter 3, verse 16, the Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. Amen. 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 I'm just going to talk very, very briefly about the Lord's roar. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you so much because... You are kind and you are merciful and you are generous. Forgive us of our weaknesses and our wickedness and our sins, Father. Allow us, Father, to lay our hearts bare open for you to pour into us, Father. Breathe of us, Father. Speak to us. Speak life to us in Jesus' name. We love you, Father. We honor you and we thank you. Amen. 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 Um, I've discovered that um, that um, we all have voices. Um, we all have um, a roar of our own. I think everybody has a roar. Even children, people who are not children of God, they have a roar. And I looked up the definition of a, a, a roar, and it is a full, deep, prolonged cry uttered by a lion and other large wild animal. Uh, it's a full, deep, prolonged cry. Um, roaring represents power and presence and warning. And every child of God has a roar within them. Um, but sometimes I've noticed that life is wild. And sometimes in the wilderness of life, we can forget our roar. We can lose our voice. Um, I remember um, being a, a kid, and I remember, I never forgot, I was little. And um, I was in preschool. I think I may have told you guys this. And there was this kid who, um, who who took my Legos. He was like bullying me, and I'm sitting there by myself playing with my little bitty Legos. And he grabs, tears my whole thing down, grabs one little Lego, and walk away. And right when he walked away, I grabbed him, I rolled his sleeve up, and bit him. <laughs> and the, the story the teachers told that I spit on him and that I was fight. I think I talked to my dad about this recently. The story that, that was told to them was that I spit on him and that I, I hurt him or something. And, um, I felt at that time that my dad didn't ask what my story was or didn't communicate it. All he did, he came there with the belt to spank me. Because all he knew was that I, I bit a kid and I wasn't supposed to do that. And, and sometimes in life we lose our voice. Sometimes we lose who we are sometimes just because life is wild. I, I, I used to think, I used to judge dysfunctional families. Anybody got some dysfunction in their family? I used to... A judge, you ever know, judge people who look at, at, at people who are married who act single, and you got single period people who act married. I used to judge 
people's dysfunctionality. I used to look at their way of life and how they did things and formulate my own opinions and my whole my own high-mindedness of whatever what I was thinking. But life has humbled me so much so that that because without realizing that you can lose your voice in life. Life is wild and, and crazy, and sometimes things happen beyond our control. I, I think about Israel. Israel is like me, is like us. That it, it, It's a weird relationship that they have with the Lord because, and, and if you look at it from the outside, you think God was dysfunctional because he would save them, deliver them, bless them, and then allow their enemies to take them over. And, 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 and mess them up and they become low and then he delivers them and blesses them and it's a cycle of madness and you would think if you were looking on the outside that God is dysfunctional but God always has purpose and sometimes God makes purpose out of our humanistic dysfunctionalities sometimes God will use our dysfunction to get glory out of them yes. and so what happens uh, in the book of, of Joel is, is, is that a famine is taking place they don't quite know the date that Joel was written. They don't know quite the authorship. They know it's Joel, but they don't, they don't know for sure the time period, but he's speaking to Israel. And so locusts have come into this town, this, uh, this farming village, what it may seem like, and they have devoured everything. They, they've eaten everything. They, 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 they've left nothing. Joel describes them as, as, as having teeth of lions. They've gone through and they've devoured the land. And then Joel says, what God will do will be worse to you, Israel. What God has done to, in this famine what, what, of, of all that happened will be done worse to you. And, 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 and sometimes within the, the world of dysfunctionality, God has purpose. Don't it seem crazy? Anybody got some kids out there? Your kids do bad. And you spank them and you get angry with them. But you still bless them. I never, I used to judge people. You know, people will come into the bank and they will have hundreds of thousands of dollars. And they get mad at their kids because their kids didn't do right by them. And they say, take their names off the accounts. And I'm like, okay, done. <laughs> then they come back the next week, put their names back on the account. And I'm like, done. <laughs> then two months later, they come back and I'm sitting there like, they're like, take their names off the account. And I'm sitting there like, are you crazy? Is your just but but because I'm judging, and, and, and sometimes we're not always aware of what's going on in someone's personal dysfunctionality. Y'all know some of us, all of us got something going on. Y'all know that, right? All of us think we are perfect, but we are not perfect. God created us wonderful, wondrously, but life being wild has tempered and molested with that that wonderful creation. And so, because we are living life on this side, things happen. And so, and that was the same with Israel. What, 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 what has made you lose your voice? Has, has, you know what was happening with Israel? One of the things that was happening with them, the influences of the culture helped them lose their relationship in the context of relationship. So sometimes, anybody ever get distracted? I can talk about me. I like video games and I like television and I like games. And, 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 and sometimes in life, if you are not careful, you'll live life and you forget about the Lord. Amen. So, so sometimes we live life and we grow dependent and strong in the Lord and stuff happens and people anger us and, and, and all, all of a sudden we lose track of, of where we are and then we lose touch with God. Anybody ever lost touch with God before? Amen. I mean, I, you ain't got to raise your hand. I'll talk. I've lost touch with the Lord and sometimes, sometimes God allowed things to happen to me so I can reconnect with the pastor talked about this last Sometimes he allows things to occur to connect with him. Right. G, 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 it, it, it's amazing that, 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 that Joel in chapter 1, the famine has uh, arrived, and, 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 and Joel warns them that if you don't do something different, God is going to do worse than what the famine could. Yes. And, 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 and sometimes uh, we forget how to roar. Um, and, and, and what I, what I, what I want what I want to talk about today a little bit is about about God's word because sometimes when we lose touch with our voice and we lose touch with with why because you know what's crazy sometimes stuff happens to make me lose me anybody ever lost yourself Any, anybody ever have so much stuff going on in life that you lose who you are where you are and what you are and you forget who you are and who you are. 
It's not, it's not, you know, because sometimes you, you, you know, you can't roar silently. It, it's very difficult. I mean, I guess you could, um, but, 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 but sometimes we, we, life has taken away our voice, has taken away our, our, our roar. And, 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 and one of the things that, 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 that Joel teaches us is to, to roar back. And not necessarily make a raw roar, but, but well, one of the first things we need to do is uh, repent. Everybody say repent. 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 repent basically means to change your mind. Re re repentance comes in, in chapter 1, verse 13. He, he, he tells them, he says, Gird yourselves and lament, ye priests, how ye ministers of the altar, come lie uh, all night in sackcloth, ye ministers, O oh my God, for the meat offering and the drink offering is withholding from the house of your God. We have to we have to change our mindsets. I, and I know that's words sometimes get boring because I know we hear pastors talk about it all the time. We come to Sunday night, repent, change your mind. Because sometimes we get our mind, like, anybody ever had your mind get off track? We forget our purpose. Anybody forget your purpose sometimes? Sometimes I forget my purpose because we, a pastor said something to me at the dinner table that I, 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 I've not forgotten. He said one of the problems we have is that instead of being servants, we act like... Um, Help. We act like we're supposed to get paid. We, we act like we're doing a favor by doing things in the church. I, you ain't got to look at and raise your hand or nothing, but I've been guilty of it. I, so, sometimes I feel like doing things in the church, they, they deserve to have me there. Anybody ever feel that way? But I don't want to do the work that God has called me to do because, because God, they need me. I want to feel needed. I want to feel like, 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 like I'm supposed to be here. But are we really servants? Do, do we have servant hearts? Are we really committed to doing the work that we do? And sometimes I have to change my thinking over and over and over again, just like Israel. I got to change the way I process my data. Sometimes I got to change the way I do things because I get messed up and get off course. Sometimes I lose my voice. I lose my roar, I lose the power that God has given me to do what he's told me to do. And it's okay because we are in this flesh, and this flesh is messy, and it's okay to be messy. I know it may sound weird, it's okay to be a little dysfunctional because God understands it. He is not dysfunctional, but he loves you in spite of your dysfunctionality. Amen. He seeks to always bring us to him. And sometimes bringing us to him means allowing our enemies to mess us up. It, it is amazing to me, but the one, the first thing Joel says is repent, change your thinking. The, 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 the next thing we need to do is 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 outcry. Everybody say outcry. Outcry. Outcry is pouring and crying out to the Lord. Outcry to the Lord means I'm sorry. I, I, help me, Lord. I'm, help me. Talk to me. Yeah. You know, God wants us to talk to Him. Yeah. That's called prayer. I told the kids, prayer is talking to God. And sometimes, though, sometimes our outcry has a source of brokenness that's needed. Anybody know that, that the Lord is close to a contrite heart? Sometimes I wonder, why is the Lord trying to break my heart? He's trying to break my heart so, so I can be close to him. He's trying to break my heart with situations and hardships, not to hurt me, but to bring me closer. Pastor taught us that, 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 that God is not concerned with our comfort. He's concerned with our souls. He's concerned with connecting with us. He is concerned with using us. I love God because God will allow situations to use us. He will allow circumstances to get glory. He can get glory out of anything. I think somebody told me uh, he can get glory. With you. you know what happens though? Voices out there mess you up. And they, they may stop your outcry. Me and, me and uh, Minister Octavius, we were on the road yesterday bringing some of the VBS stuff. And one of the things fell off the truck, actually fell off a couple times, but, but we were on the road and to protect the drivers, we dro I drove on the side so we could block the drivers so that they won't run over the thing. And I wanted to get closer to the intersection, but I wasn't really. And this lady was driving. She, she saw us double park and put the thing back. She started cussing us out. And then she drove up, what are you doing on the side of the road without knowing our situation? Without doing anything about it. That's what happens in life. Has anybody cussed you out today for no reason? For nothing that you did wrong, you were just there at the wrong time, or you weren't in the place they wanted you to be in? Anybody ever throw your trajectory off, throw your, your path off with madness? And I looked at Brother Octavius, he just smiled. I was like, what? Oh, I smiled too. I didn't 
relax, man. <laughs> but but, but my, 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 my point is, is that she ain't got nothing to do with us. All right. We're trying to do the work of the Lord. Yes. And, and sometimes you do realize, sometimes obstacles get put into our path. You guys know that sometimes we are, as Pastor said, under attack by the enemy because the enemy wants to steal our voice and he uses weak people. He uses things to get around to, to, to throw our focus off. I could have went in there and started yelling at the lady and she could have got out the car. We could have had a whole scene. But she cussed and she just went on about her business. And you know what we did? We went back on about our business. It, it, it is important to remember your purpose and God's purpose for you because sometimes things cloud that purpose. I don't want to use this voice to cuss folk out. I don't, I don't, I don't want to. She, that was her roar. You know, the Bible distinctly says it uses roar in the context of roaring waters, roaring seas. Also, enemies roar. Did y'all know enemies roar? And you cannot stop the enemy from roaring at you, but you can decide how you're going to handle that roar. Yes. You can decide what you're going to do. See, I've learned I cannot control people. I can try to control myself. Try to. Sometimes I try to feel like that. But, 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 but sometimes we have to outcry to the Lord. Sometimes that broken heart is how God can get glory out of us. I, 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 and I know sometimes it's shameful to cry and shameful to, to, to lay yourself bare, but God is looking to some folk that ain't afraid of being ashamed. Right. What, what are you ashamed of? Are you ashamed to say I'm sorry? God, guilty of that. Are you, are you ashamed to ask for help? Are you ashamed to show that you can be weak sometimes? Are you ashamed to show that, that, that you are not perfect and that you're messed up just like everybody else? Are you ashamed to acknowledge the fact that my voice sometimes is lost? Life happens, everybody. And sometimes, and, 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 you know, the first people we blame sometimes, well, I can talk about me. Sometimes I blame God. Anybody ever blame God? You ain't got any rage. Sometimes I blame God. Sometimes I blame the, you ever blame the church? Sometimes I blame my mom. Yeah, my mama did. Yeah, sometimes I blame my father. I, and sometimes I blame the wife. Blame the baby, man. The baby kept me up at night. And so, because the baby kept me up at night. Oh! <laughs> Gotta give you a miracle, and sometimes you complain about it. You know, it's amazing how God, God has blessed us with a miracle. How dare I complain about his miracle? Amen. How dare I give an excuse about his goodness and his mercy and, and, and the prayers answered and, and, and miracles? To how dare I? But sometimes I get messed up. My voice gets messed up, and, and I forget where I am and who I am. Don't ever forget where you are. No matter what the situation, never forget who you are. Don't ever forget what you are. And sometimes a heart that's broken can, can bring you back to focus. You have to, 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 to outcry, to repent, to outcry. The third thing you have to do is ask for forgiveness. Look at uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 17 of, of Joel. A ask forgiveness. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Um, between the porch and the altar, and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord. Spare thy people, O Lord. Lord, I'm sorry. Spare me. I was wrong. Forgive me. I messed up. Don't do it to me, Lord. Please. It, it, it's the state of our heart. So, I don't know what it is about a broken heart, but things become so clear. The, the stuff that don't matter gets thrown out. Y'all notice the stuff that don't matter gets thrown off the table. That typically happens when we experience death. You know, when someone, when we lose someone we love, all the bad things they did, most of the surface stuff don't even matter. Sometimes the real deep bad stuff that people did don't matter because they're gone. Because it is not because they're wrong, gone, it's because your perspective has changed because of your heart. Your heart is different. Your, your heart has changed because you realize what is important is not what no one else did. What's important is that I do what I did for the Lord. That, 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 that I do what I was supposed to do. You know, I, I like to boast and, and brag that I did 70% of this and 30% of this, and I have this title and this degree and this whatever, but that, none of that matters. Yeah, brother, I'll tell you what you're talking about again. None of that matters. It's all pretty stuff that don't matter. And you know what we deal with? We deal with 95% of stuff that don't matter, and we focus on the stuff that don't matter and the stuff that do, we ignore it. You know what matters? In children's church, looking after those little babies and teaching them, that matters. Yeah. Getting up in this pulpit, preaching every Sunday don't matter. I know, it, I know it seems like it's popular and it's fancy and everybody can see you, but over there is what really matters. Our future is what matters. Not, I mean, and that's the, the word of God is awesome, it's holy, it, 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 and, and preaching in these walls have value, but, but that ain't all that, that 
that this ministry thing encompasses, it encompasses way more than a pulpit. Yes. It is connecting and in relationship and bonding with lives to change them for God's glory. Yeah. That's what is important. That's what Pastor has been, has been teaching us. His glory is all that matters and how we get glory. Yeah. Yeah. I like that song that says that, that your, your thoughts, my mind, your, 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 your love, my heart. Uh, um, that, that, that's important because I understand that everything I have is from God. And if he speaks, speak through me, Lord. Use me. Yes. God might use me to hug a little baby. Use me, Lord. Yes. He might use me to give you five dollars when you need it. Use me, Lord. Yes. Yes. If it's the priest from the pulpit, use me, Lord. Whatever you see yes. fit, please use me. Yes. Yes. Uh, but but uh, uh, repent, outcry, ask for forgiveness. Of the, 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 the fourth thing we need to do is receive. Everybody say receive. Receive. Um, um, it, it is amazing because um, Joel gives the people this depressing heartbreaking news, but he also says that um, there's a flip side to this if you change. If you decide to do what's right, you get rewards. There are, there, y'all know, there are benefits to being a child of God. Amen. There are benefits that, 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 that we get just because of all that Jesus has done. We ain't have to do nothing. I like it. I like benefits when I ain't got to do no work to get. You know, ministry's work don't get me wrong, but the benefits of salvation in heaven, that don't cost us. That ain't no work for me. God got that. I got to do nothing to get it. Amen. I, I, I like fringe benefits, but 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 I, 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 when God wore, do y'all know that, that everybody has a war? The siege wars are awesome. Our enemies' war can be scary, but God has a war. God has a voice. And when God wars, Joel talks about the end times. In, in, in the valley of Jehoshaphat, the valley of decision, and at the end times when God makes the final war. When God makes this roar, that's going to be something else. Because when God roars, you're going to either be on one side of the roar or the other side of the roar. Look, look, look at verse uh, 17 and 16. Uh, in chapter 3, it says, The Lord shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. Can you imagine? I can't even imagine earth shaking. I've never been in an earthquake. Yeah, I mean, but can you imagine heaven shaking? That, that's louder than thunder. That he, God, when he speaks, he will shake heaven. He will shake the earth. His roar will be I remember when, when, when Israel had sinned and they came to the mountain and, and, and Moses was up there that was worshiping the, 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 the animal with Aaron. And when God spoke, they asked God, please be quiet. We don't want you to utter another word. It was, it was, it was terrible to them in their sin. It was, it was so bad that the, the, the Aaron said an animal if it came to the mountain it was destroyed and it stolen. It. God's voice and respect will be respected. Heaven and earth will bow down and every knee will bow to God. And on that day, what side of God's world will you be on? God says that, 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 that the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people. He will be our hope when that day happens. Because I can guarantee you the folk that don't know him, when he roars, they're going to be terrified. He will be our hope. Hope is important, everybody. Hope is key. Where you put your hope at is important. Do I hope in my wife? I love her dearly, but no. Do I hope in my job? Is that my source of everything? No. My hope is the Lord. My hope is his provision, not the church. I love you guys, not my mom or my dad, not my son or sons, but, 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 but God is my hope. I got to say sons now because I have a new one. But, but, but God is my hope. God, he is my hope. He is the source of everything. You know why some of us lose our voice? Because we hope in the wrong people, misplaced expectations. People are going to, everybody know that people will disappoint you. They are going to disappoint you. If you have your hope in people, guess what? Yes. You are messed up. Yes. But if your hope is in the Lord of hosts, the Lord of angelic hosts, your hope is well placed. Yes. He says that when I roar, my people, I will be the hope of my people. And then he says, I'm going to be the strength of the children of Israel. He will be our strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He, he, is, he, he is my strength. Proverbs says that the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous will run into it. He, he is our strength. He is our hope. He is where we go when, when we have nowhere to go. He should be the first source. 
It's my source when I get mad to cuss folk out and to get angry. I gotta change. Like, sometimes I feel weak, and sometimes I get angry. I'm like, man, why did I get angry? And it's not to get the angry part. It's what I say when I get angry. So yeah. anybody ever say the wrong thing when you get angry? Yes. I, 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 yes. Talk about me. Any, anybody ever do the wrong things when you get angry? Yeah. Anybody ever have somebody hit you and you go hit them back and they're on their way? I can talk about me. So I, I, I do that sometimes. I, I mess up sometimes. Yeah. But but thank God that 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 sometimes I have to repent. And when I change my thinking, I'm like, Lord, I'm sorry. Hey, I'm sorry for kidding. Anybody ever do that? Yeah. Do that next time. They're gonna think yeah. you crazy. Yeah. You kick somebody, you realize it, go back to them and say, I'm sorry I kicked you. My bad. They might look at you like you're crazy. Or you might bless them. That means it's okay to make a mistake, but what you gonna do after that mistake? The biggest thing to do is when you cuss somebody out to go back to them and say, I'm sorry. You know, that's something that hard. Well, it's hard. I can talk about it. Sometimes it's hard to say, I'm sorry. It's hard. With a broken heart to say, I'm sorry. I guess I'd rather. Say, I'm sorry before the Lord has to break my heart. Anybody want the Lord to break your heart? That ain't a prayer that you want to answer. Lord, break my heart. I don't know if I want to, 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 to say that prayer. Me and Brother Octavius talked about that yesterday. Do we really want to do the hard things, really? We might say it, but do we really want it? I don't know if I really want it. I don't know if I want the Lord to break my heart. I, and that, that's not political to say, y'all, so I'm a preacher and I'm saying it, so I'm sorry. But it ain't. Sometimes I don't want that. I don't want to endure the pain. Anybody like pain? No. Oh, I hate pain. I've said this many times before I hate it, but, but sometimes God will use it to, to, to get glory. And at the end of the day, it's all about his glory, no matter how painful it is, no matter the great it, no matter how great the loss is. I couldn't imagine losing my mom or my son or my wife or my sons, neither one of them. But 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 can I say, Lord, no matter what the loss is, I will give you glory. Yeah. You will be my focus. Pastor had said that sometimes if you put things above God, you want God to remove those things? Oh, that's deep. But he'll remove them to give you glory. He'll save what he removed and remove and get glory from you and so that you can give him glory. I'd rather not have to go through that. I'd rather just put him first and be cool. I'd rather put him first and just be cool. Be careful what you invest your energy and your focus in because he, will take, he might take it from you. Lord, help me. I don't want to be have idols on Let me take it from you. Yeah. Now, I watch a lot of TV. Let me take my, your eyes from you so you can see me. I know that's deep and it's uncomfortable. But, but, but what if God took your eyes because you were using them for the wrong things? What if he took your voice because you were saying the wrong things? What if he took your mind because your mind was your source and he wasn't the source? And I know that sounds morbid, but, but at the end of the day, all that matters is his glory. What have you put above his glory? What have you put above his roar? You, 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 what will God's roar be for you? Will it be victory or will it be defeat? Will, will God's roar be favor or will it be fear? Will God's roar be justice for you or will it be judgment for you? Will God's roar be eternal life for you or will God's roar be eternal death? God, see the beautiful thing about God's roar because God has a roar, we can have a roar. Because God has a voice, we have a voice. He, he is interested in, you know, I did not know this. God is very political. I always thought well, I should stay out of politics, but God is very political. Do you realize that Israel, that during this time and during those times of Israel, God allowed their enemies, the people they conquered with his help to conquer them, to bring about his people's repentance. And the people think, oh, well, what about your God? Oh, yeah, it's all good now. Your God ain't doing nothing. And then God, after bringing them after their hearts are broken, after they repented, turned around and said, I'm going to destroy your enemies. I'm going to do to them what they did to you moreover, yes. because I am the Lord of hosts. Yes. God yes. decides who sits in presidential offices in spite of exportation, deportation, and break up of families, and police brutalities, and the acknowledgement and the agenda of human agendas. God still sits on the throne. Yes. And when humans think they have their agenda, God will wipe all that away. Yeah. In Revelation, he will say, I will wipe every tear from their eye. There will be a time of reckoning when God roars, every knee will bow, yeah. every tongue will confess yeah. that Jesus Christ yeah. is Lord. Yeah. And so when God roars, where will you be at? What will you be doing? God can roar today. He can roar right now. I can drop dead preaching right now. And his roar will still be his roar. What side of his roar will you be on? Yes. Yes. You value it your life, my friend. 
to evaluate what you're doing, evaluate what's important to you. Ms. Alicia asked uh, for the VBS grade. What's the first thing you think? I ain't gonna be part of that VBS stuff. That ain't my that ain't my flow. It's too long. You know, it ain't it ain't it ain't it ain't, it ain't driving with my plans because my plans are. My plans are more important in the church. Do you know when Israel muttered against Moses, they used Moses as an excuse their real beef was with the Lord? It's just easy to blame the preacher and the church, ain't it? Because it ain't politically right to say, God, I don't like you. God, I don't want to do what you want to do. But I can say, hey, you know what? Pastor did this at the last minute. Let me not go because you know what? He did it at the last minute. Right. But the truth is, we are, just, we are. It, it, the, the Lord said, it is not you that they are rejecting. It is me that they are rejecting. See, we think it's all, y'all think, we think it's, I, 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 mean, I can say this, I think it's all about me if I say, hey, let's have a meeting and don't nobody come. I can say, you know what, it's about me and I get them a feeling and I get upset. But at the, rea the reality of the situation that it is about the Lord's will. And what you, the, you can see, they can excuse to say, as a church, it's not the Lord, but truly, it's, it's a relationship there. Yeah. What's on your priority list? Yeah. And I, and I, and I, I noticed, I, I would just put the plug in for Pastor. I'll be here at the parade. If it's 92 degrees, get you some cold bottle water and stand out there and walk in that parade. All hands on deck. All hands on deck for his purposes. All hands on You know what his purpose is? There are children in this community who do not know the Lord. There are children up and down these streets who do not know the Lord. They do not know who he is and they deserve to know who he is. There are people who do not know who the Lord is. And they deserve salvation, just like they need salvation. They don't deserve it, but they need it. They need to hear it. Yes. God wants to use your voice. He wants to use your hands. He wants to use your feet. He wants to use your mouth. What's stopping you? What, what's getting you? What are you playing above God's plan? Is it because Pastor offended you? Is it because I offended you? I'm sorry, but I did. But, 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 but what's more important than God's plan? Is your personal feelings more important than God? If you know that, that this is a morning church, this is a morning pastor, your voice belongs here. You need to roar. You need to roar. You need to hear your voice. You need to see your, your body. And I know it sounds crazy. You, you know, I, I'm going to say this. Um, and and I don't, I'm not boasting or nothing or uh, anything like that. I remember... And I've never said, I've said this to Octavia, Brother Octavia, Jesse, and I've said it to my wife, but I've said it to very few people. Uh, I think I said it to Minister Darlene, but when, we, when me and Brother Jesse, this sanctuary, and I know this is being recorded, but whatever, uh, me and Brother Jesse spent hours by ourselves, you remember that? To take this church, hours, hours by ourselves, hours. Brothers came by and did work, but me and Brother Jesse was here for I remember because I didn't have no job, so I, you know, I could be here half of that time. But, but nonetheless, we spent a lot of time here at the Church. And sometimes if you're not careful, you'll become weary and well doing. You'll become weary because you feel like you're doing this by yourself, but you're not. People just got issues, you know. All of us got the voices around us, and sometimes still our voice, we get distracted. And that's what Pastor talked about Wednesday. We are under attack. And if we do not acknowledge the fact that we're being attacked privately, we can't. We, I'm tired of, ain't y'all tired of pink elephants? I'm tired of ignoring reality. I'm tired of pettiness and ignoring that it's there. I want us there to challenge the enemy and challenge the things that, that people tr ignore and bring it to light. Address it with love and allow God to do the healing. That's what I want to do. I want to be the real church. I want to take the issues that are uncomfortable. I want to press out my fears and my pride and all that to get God's work accomplished. I want to have the strength to look you in the eye and say, you know what? I was wrong. I'm sorry. Let's do ministry right. I want to have the strength to say, I want to do the right thing the right way right now. I want to have the strength to say, I'm sorry. I messed up. Forgive me for hurting you. Let's get back right. Don't you want that? I really want that. I want us to be the church that God has called us to be. Not be about petty things that don't matter. I want to be about the roar of his work. And not my comforts. Amen. Let's pray. Father, um, here we are. We come to you asking for forgiveness when we have put things before you. Put things ahead of you. Put things instead of you, Father. Forgive us. Forgive us for our laziness. Forgive us for putting
priorities of life ahead of you, our families, our spouses, our education, our money, our wealth, our houses, our cars before you. Forgive us, Lord. Give us the strength to do your will. Give us the hunger to hear from you. Give us, Father, willing hands and willing feet to do your work, to love your love. Use our minds, use our hearts, Father. Use our hands to do your will. In Jesus' name, convict us right now. Change us right now, Father. We cry out to you, asking you to forgive us. Forgive us of our sins from the pulpit all the way to, to, to Children's Church. Forgive us, Father. Help us to do your work in this earth. No matter the cost, no matter the pain, help us to follow you, Father, in Jesus' name. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Amen.